So today we're gonna to be talking about what does this and this have to do with X-ray radiography and CT scanning? Specifically, we're gonna be talking about why do higher dose X-ray images look better than a lower dose X-ray image? So guys, I'm Brian Nett from HowardyologyWorks.com. We have bite-sized content that's of interest for those in the radiology field, especially radiologic technologists. That sounds good to you. Click below on subscribe, and then click on the little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. So you're very familiar with making measurements of distance, for instance. So if we take out our tape measure and we go, we wanna measure the length of a certain thing, we can look at it, and we have what we call a deterministic measurement. We can look right here on the tape measure and the accuracy of my measurement has to do with the tape measure I'm using, the potentially the gradations in that tape measure, but there's not a random component to making that measurement. It's a, sorry to interrupt the regularly scheduled program, but what is a YouTube Ninja doing here? Congratulations on reaching 100 subscribers. Oh, thank you. I can see that YouTube has spared literally no expense, or maybe some expense, but this is my 100 subscriber paper award, so it's a cardboard play button from YouTube. I really appreciate it. Thanks 100 subscribers, and if you haven't yet subscribed, you'll be not just one 100, but one in more than 100, but click on subscribe below, and click on the little bell icon so you get notified when we release new content. Thanks a lot. Terministic measurement that I'm making. This is different than when we're using x-rays to measure the attenuation inside of our body. So what we're doing, like we've talked about before, in our x-ray imaging, we're using the x-rays and there's some probabilistic effect as the x-rays come into the body. They're either gonna interact with photoelectric, with Compton, or they're gonna pass through. Those are the three things that can happen. But those are what we call stochastic effects. So that's where, that's where this coin comes in. This is a big coin that we have that's uh, a chocolate coin actually, but it's from the Winchester Cathedral. And on this side, we're gonna call the heads up and this side is the tails, it has the tag on it. So we're gonna show flipping, flipping this coin and we're gonna flip this coin in order to show essentially the probabilistic effect. The same thing that occurs in coin flipping occurs inside of our body when we're making these measurements in a stochastic event. What's the likelihood of measuring heads? If I do just one single rotation here, or essentially coin flip, my measurement would tell me that I just did one single one. The probability of measuring heads is zero because I did one measurement and I got tails. So we know one measurement is definitely insufficient. We cannot get a good answer from just one measurement. Four, so I got one was with tails. The second time, heads. The third time, tails. The fourth time, tails. So if I do that four times, the measurement I got was that the probability of heads was 25%. So one quarter of the time, I got heads coming up. So you can see if we do that eight times, let me go real quick. Heads. And this time I got a five eighths probability of heads. So again, four eighths or one half is what we know the probability of a fair coin to be. So you can see that as we do more observations, each of these is an independent measurement that we're making. We're getting closer and closer to 
the real, what we call expectation value, or the real number that we're expecting to get for the likelihood of flipping a heads. And just in math terms, when we talk about the likelihood of any chance of a random number where we just have a couple options here, this is called a binomial distribution. And if you have more events, what happens in the X-ray imaging, we have what we call a Poisson distribution. But the essential idea is the same, that the X-ray comes in and then it can either pass through, it can interact via photoelectric or it can interact via Compton. And if we only have a few events, each time, each one, there is a stochastic effect. And if we only have a few events and we're measuring a stochastic effect, we're going to make inaccurate measurements because we only have a few events. So if we make an inaccurate measurement in one pixel, and then we make an inaccurate measurement in the other pixel, and the inaccuracies there, they're not correlated with one another. They're not related to one another because they were all independent events. So if we make those inaccurate measurements next to one another, what happens is we have what we should have our true signal in the image. And then we have one pixels too low, the neighboring pixels too high, pixel above it is even higher. And what we call that is we call that noise in our x-ray image. It has to do with a stochastic process. And the more measurements that you get on your detector, the less noise you're going to have in your image. The measurements that we care about are actually the ones that are on our detector. And if we have a very thick patient or a very big section of bone, that region where the x-rays are going to be heavily attenuated in a region, for instance, if it's passing through a rib in the long direction or a very thick section of bone, the region behind that high level of attenuation that region right there is going to have more noise. And again, that's just because we have fewer, what we call independent measurements on our X-ray detector. And because we have fewer measurements, there's more noise. If we have X-rays coming in, even if we have a perfect detector, the world's most perfect detector, this perfect detector still would have noise, in. but at a high level, they are random events. And that's why having more of those measurements will lead to lower noise in the images. And since more measurements essentially means using more x-rays to come in, more x-rays means more radiation dose. And this is why the radiation dose in your image is directly related to the noise that you're seeing in your x-ray image or in your CT image. And again, for CT, the same idea. Again, the image quality is gonna be related to the radiation dose because in CT, all we're doing is we're doing x-rays just for many views. So if you haven't seen our video on photoelectric and Compton interactions, check that one out. It's gonna be coming here in the next. <music>